Good afternoon, everyone. I'm London Breed, the mayor of the city and county of San Francisco. Really excited to be here with some of our city's most incredible leaders, members of the Board of Supervisors, and including the person who has led the effort uh, for each and every one of us that brought us here to this day, Supervisor Ronan. Thank you so much. For far too long, survivors of sexual harassment and assault have had to navigate through a tangled web of city departments and resources as they fight for justice and accountability. But now, thanks to the leadership of everyone here, we are helping those survivors receive the help and the support that they truly need. Recent surveys have shown that more than 80% of women and 40% of men have experienced some form of sexual harassment. But nearly two-thirds of those assaults are not even reported to authorities. So why is that? Because time after time, survivors have been dismissed by the system, a system that is supposed to help those individuals get the treatment they need to help heal from the tra traumatizing experience that they've had. We have heard so many incredible stories about things that sadly victims have had to go through to the point where they've just given up. And to have to recount such a, a horrible tragedy time and time again is something that what we are doing here today to address is hopefully going to help to deal with this. This is not OK in the area, era of the Me Too movement, and we cannot stand by and let survivors go through this experience alone. And so today, I'm proud that the Board of Supervisors has taken a huge step forward in helping survivors of sexual harassment and assault by creating our new Office of Sexual Harassment and Resu Assault Response Prevention, which is why we're here today. We as a city clearly need to send a strong message we hear you, we are here for you, and we're going to do everything we can to put the resources necessary to make sure that we don't just pass legislation to make an office like this possible. We actually passed budget, a budget allocation to support the success of this office. And so I want to thank all of my colleagues who are here. Every member of the Board of Supervisors was a sponsor of this legislation. Every member of the Board of Supervisors fought for and voted to support the funding to help make this office a success. I also like to take this opportunity to acknowledge Cheryl Davis of the San Francisco Human Rights Commission. I know she's not here today, but she will be leading the charge in this effort because we know that she focuses on issues around human rights and equity and things that matter. And this clearly matters to the city and county of San Francisco, which is why we are putting it at the forefront of the Human Rights Commission. And so I'm grateful to Cheryl for her leadership. Thank you to all of our commissioners here who are here from the Commission on the Status of Women. It does take a village to move things forward in this capacity. And we have had an incredible leader in this effort, someone who has been a fighter and relentless in not only just producing this legislation, but making sure that every member of the Board of Supervisors served as a co-sponsor and a real partner for this particular effort. And so ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I'd like to introduce Supervisor Hillary Ronan. Hello, ladies and gentlemen and San Franciscans. Today is an amazing day and victory for all women, but also all survivors of sexual assault in San Francisco. Let's give that a round of applause. <laughs> Um, I want to start out by thanking Mayor Lee so much. First, uh, when she was still a supervisor for being a very early sponsor of the legislation and now uh, for signing it into law and holding this beautiful ceremony that I think elevates the importance of the legislation and this issue. So thank you so much, Mayor Breed. And then to all my members on the Board of Supervisors, it is so rare 
to introduce a piece of legislation that is unanimously sponsored from day one by every member of the Board of Supervisors. And I think that's a testament to how amazing this board is and my colleagues who care so much about this issue, but it's also a testament to the women behind this legislation. I did not write this legislation alone. I wrote this piece of legislation with a group of six survivors of rape who worked every single day to me, who came to my office and brought the issue to my attention to begin with, and then who said, we don't just want to complain, we want to sit down and we want to solve this issue. And so I just want to give a huge shout out to those women and a very specific thank you uh, to Jane Doe, who you're going to hear from in a moment, <laughs> to Rachel, who is here with us today, Tiffany, who couldn't be here um, because she's on one of those rare two-week vacations, but who we're going to have a chance to celebrate at the Board of Supervisors in in a few weeks to Brittany, to Maria, and to who's here with us as well. Thank you, Maria, for being here. Um, and then also to Audrey, who you're going to hear from in a moment. Uh, we had an incredible team together uh, with my legislative aides and, and specifically to Carolina Guz, uh, Guzman, Carolina Morales, um, who uh, championed this with all of her heart and soul from day one. So if we can give them all a very big round of applause. They deserve it, and so much more. So it wasn't a surprise to me um, that there are many women in San Francisco who don't come forward and report sexual assault, rape, or sexual harassment um, because we know this is an epidemic all throughout the country. But what did surprise me is that women who did feel comfortable coming forward, who wanted accountability uh, from their perpetrators, who wanted to be involved in our city systems to, to investigate, to prosecute, to, hold to get some accountability and justice, that they were treated so poorly by city departments. That was honestly a shock to me. And the more that I learned, the more that I realized that we couldn't just have a meeting with the heads of those departments who I know have the best intentions, that we needed something more uh, regular that was going to get us the type of systemic change that would make sure that San Francisco would not only dissuade survivors com com from coming forward and reporting these crimes, but would also take a step forward, make sure we're on the cutting edge and leading the nation in terms of the best practices of dealing with sexual assault. When we have statistics that one in, in every two women in her lifetime is sexually assaulted and one of every six men is sexually assaulted, this is not something that we can just throw our hands up and say, oh, that's a shame. This is an epidemic that must be taken with all seriousness and we must have systemic change at every level. And by starting a sharp office here in San Francisco where survivors and victims can come forward and say, I'm not being believed by a city employee, I'm not being taken seriously, I'm not being treated with dignity, I'm not being respected, that from day one they will have an advocate to help them navigate through these difficult systems and be with them side by side as they're going through the very painful process of telling their stories and getting justice. And so um, this is a very important step. It's one of only many steps that we need to end this epidemic of sexual assault in the United States. And I'm so proud of the leap forward we're making here today. And without further ado, it is my absolute honor to introduce two survivors who are gonna speak to you next. Uh, the first one, Jane Doe, is actually a city employee who I have worked on for years on women's rights legislation. We worked on equal pay legislation together and um, is the one that brought these issues to my attention in the first place. We're going to hear from her in a moment. And then Audrey Martinez, who is a leader with Communities United Against Violence. It's a organization that works with the LGBT Q uh, community to end violence in that community and deal with the very specific issues uh, that that community faces. So if you can give them a warm round of applause, that would be wonderful. Thank you. Hi, 
Hi. <laughs> Uh, Mayor Breed and Supervisor Ronan, leaders and allies in our community, thank you. Recently, a candidate for Congress stated that the people closest to the pain should be closest to the power, often though we suffer in silence. Many of us who speak up are further quieted by abuse. But you listened. You listened to me and dozens of rape victims recount the details of our darkest hours so many of us were not only raped, but then blamed and discarded by San Francisco's law enforcement agencies, those sworn to serve and protect our rights to safety, dignity, and equal protection under the law. So many of us didn't receive proper care at SF General Hospital because the city's sexual assault and response team is inadequately resourced. We are told that rape is a fact of life. Rape is a sentence. The terror of the crime is only the beginning. The magnitude is unfathomable at first, eclipsed by shock and denial. But so corrosive is the impact that victims can never be the same, nor can we escape as the nightmare unfolds. I am Jane Doe, and it has been two years and nine months since I was raped. 949 days of my precious life stolen. Supervisor Ronan knew me before as a colleague in government. A week or so after the rape, we had a call about work. I blurted out what had happened. SFPD was utterly indifferent and tried him brushing me off without so much as an interview. They deem rape to be complicated, but not serious. I was patronized for asking police to take basic investigative steps, like securing video evidence or interviewing key witnesses. I couldn't wrap my mind around it. Neither could Supervisor Ronan, whose unwavering support has been a source of strength. She and her extraordinary team, especially Carolina Morales, have worked with a group of multi-lithic, multi-generational, multicultural victims of rape who have summoned the courage to stand up. Mayor Breed, supervisors, I'm overwhelmed with gratitude to each of you. At the beginning of the hearings that led us to today, victim after victim shared harrowing experiences of being trivialized, blamed, and discarded. You listened. You asked thoughtful, smart questions of our city departments that consistently fail the rising masses of victims of rape and assault. You stood with us on the steps of City Hall to call for change. And today, we take a step forward by taking action. The SHARP office will be a source of advocacy and accountability that shamefully we, don't, we lack in San Francisco. A voice, a voice definitely absent in the chorus crying out, me too. On behalf of victims, survivors, warriors, loved ones, all those who ever have or will be affected, thank you. And also a special thanks to Supervisor Stephanie for your support. Without women in office, we wouldn't be here. It's amazing that today, our first African-American female mayor is signing legislation authored by a female legislator and supported by all of her colleagues and by community members of all genders. This is truly a celebration of empowerment. To those who spoke up in the hearings at the SVU or in civil court because your criminal case is on a shelf, Thank you. I am honored and humbled to stand in solidarity with you. To those who cannot or will not speak up, who are so far from a seat at the table, we stand in solidarity with you. And today, we start the work of building a bridge to you. Thank you. Um, thank you, everyone. I'm here. Um, my name is Audrey Martinez. I'm a member of Community United Against Violence. I'm doing uh, what it takes to make the change, the change I want to see in my life. And um, I want to um, here also to celebrate um, and thank Mayor Breed, Supervisor Ronan, and all the city, city officials that supported this new um, law. Uh, to create an office of sexual assault uh, prevention and intervention. 
uh, this office is important because people of all genders uh, need to, to have a uh, safe place and get help after violence occurs. Um, as an immigrant survivor and two-spirit person, um, it's important to have a space where we can feel hard here and without being shamed. Uh, thank you for creating this space that helps uh, foster economic um, I cannot, um, sorry, I'm so nervous. <laughs> I can, um, to be accountable as a human being and stop being shamed for the experiences that we have gone through, it's about time to, be, to get help and stop the shame. Thank you. And again, I know it takes a lot of courage to get up here and share your experiences. So thank you both so much for your courage and for bringing us to this point. And I am excited that we are here today to sign this legislation uh, with members of the Board of Supervisors. President Cohen had to leave, but we have Supervisor Valley Brown, Supervisor Catherine Stephanie, Supervisor Norman Yee, Supervisor Asha Safai, and Supervisor Sandy Lee Fewer. Thank you all so much for your support of this very important legislation. And at this time, I will sign the legislation.